I've been making fun of men a little bit. Last couple of jokes have been mean to men, right? We talk about male privilege all the time in our society. We all know about male privilege. Nod, nod, nod. Some of you not nodding. Don't notice a tailwind, mate. <laughs> we don't talk about other kinds of privilege as much. We don't talk about female privilege. It exists. Female privilege absolutely exists. 100% female. I'll prove it to you, sir. Do you know how I know female privilege exists? I can look at a baby on a bus. <laughs> Just for ages. I can watch a toddler run around with no pants on and eat a packet of chips slowly. <laughs> I can go up to a stranger's baby and go, let me touch your baby, and they'll let me touch their baby. <laughs> you can't do that, not in that shirt, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's not fair, it's not right, it's not how it should be. A beautiful child is a thing of joy that everyone should be able to take pleasure in. That is literally their only survival mechanism is being so cute that you don't put them in the bin. <laughs> but we look at men like they're predators now. There's this packaging of men. Like you, so you're in a park, you see a beautiful child, you're like, that is a beautiful child. And then the mum looks at you and you're like, not a hot child. <laughs> you know, when she's taking a photo of your phone, sending it to the local police station, you're desperately trying to mime not a pedo. <laughs> You know, she's looking at you, you're looking at her, you're like, I'm not, there's nothing, look, there's nothing going, looks completely, I'm taking my pants down, look, it's completely flaccid. Make the child touch it, it doesn't even move. <laughs> it's not fair, it's not right, it's not how it should be. We package men as predators now. We package everyone with this confirmation bias. Everything we do is packaging, packaging, packaging. With Facebook giving you things you like based on things you already like. When was the last time you were surprised by a political outcome? just feeding ourselves things we like based on other things that we already like. Netflix, of course I like those films. They're like the other films that I like. Let me take a risk. <laughs> you know, give me something that you don't know that I will like. We're the species that invented Russian roulette. <laughs> Look at the world we're building for ourselves. You give a kid Netflix at four, by the time they're 27, they'll be watching Teletubbies 193. <laughs> just Teletubbies with cocks. We already have Fast and the Furious 7, guys. Basically, tell me, Toby's. <laughs> oh, she was so wonderful and kind. A perfect example of my granny. She just said the most awful things, but was so kind. She, we lived down here, and, and uh, down the road was a homeware shop owned by a gay couple. And it burned down in an accidental fire. And this is what my granny said, word for word, when she heard about the fire. She said, Oh, no, those poor faggots. <laughs> I will make them a lasagna. Like, no, Granny, you're not allowed to say that. It's a really offensive word. It's a really upsetting word. You're not allowed to use that word. But the thing is, they really like the lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> and then they came to her place and ended up staying for three months while their place got fixed. And then four years later, she flew to Canada to make their wedding cake. The whole time calling them Mr. and Mr. <laughs> and they never corrected her. I think it must be that thing where someone gets your name wrong and you leave it too long. And you're like, oh, it's awkward now. I guess I'm Shelley. I guess I'm Shelley forever, you know? She was, she was wonderful. She loved giving people things. She loved helping people. She had a specially soft spot for a sex worker. <laughs> I remember more than once screeching to a halt in King's Cross, the red light district in Sydney, and, and gesturing some, some poor lady into the car, and this lady would get to my grandmother's house and, and come inside for a schnitzel. <laughs> and the reason that my grandmother liked sex workers uh, was the same reason as she was terrible at admin which was uh, that her education got interrupted by that uh, gritty reboot of World War I. You know, World War II. World War's back, this time it's personal. If you're Jewish. Which she was. So her first encounter with the war was when she was about 11. The Arrow Kreutzer police, the fascist police in Hungary, kicked in her schoolroom door and arrested her teacher for being a Jewish activist. And my granny, at 11, got up on her schoolroom table and pegged her slate at the police. Uh, it's like an iPad. <laughs> And she was taken into jail and, and for weeks, and the only other women in the jail at that time were the sex workers. They were very nice to me. They taught me how to do my lipstick. <laughs> my granny loved giving people things. More than anything else, my granny loved Christmas. My Jewish granny, <laughs> who knew fuck all about Christmas. 
It was all right. We were little Buddhist kids. We didn't know what Christmas was. We just believed her version of events because you do as a kid. That's what you believe. Uh, my Santa was a lady Santa with a beard and a Hungarian accent. <laughs> my Santa brought goulash. <laughs> my Santa had three reindeer, the only three reindeer whose names she could remember, which were Donna, Rudolph and Olive. <laughs> Did anyone here believe in Santa as a kid? Show of hands if you believed in Santa as a kid. And keep your hands up if you still believe in conspiracy theories. Just, <laughs> just a hypothesis I'm working on. I just, I love conspiracy theories, man. Oh, I love a conspiracy theory. It's a beautiful idea that anyone has their shit together. <laughs> when the reality of the world is so confronting and confusing that we're just meaningless objects moving through a meaningless universe. And of course we look at frames and think, oh, I know what must fit in that frame. It makes sense. And you look at stars, the points of stars, and you draw figures in the stars. And the reality of the world is, is that there's nothing that makes sense. And things that look like something might not be that thing. There's not even glass in these glasses frames. I'm just... <laughs> Wearing him to make the point. That is a long con for a visual gag. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm not sure if you gave it what it deserved. 